publishing company. It's a uh, no more stoops. We started from the ground up back in 2000 and really it was 2017 is when I had the vision for it. But, mm -hmm. um, it actually, you know, has been like incorporated since 2018 and mm -hmm. like we do a lot of things for, um, you know, the we are people based organization. So we do everything from education, educating people on like, um, copyrights and how to work, own your literary work and mm -hmm. um, how important that is to, you know, preserve your story. That's like the grassroots that we were doing and, you know, um, Happy Hill um, starting out. And then mm -hmm. um, we also leveraged our platform to, you know, help people in the community publish books. So if they want to, you know, tell their family history or if they have any type of book, you know, they can publish through no more suits and then like um for our media platform we our focus is these articles so mm -hmm. like for the last four years we've been really interviewing um everybody in the carolinas that's doing like incredible shit like do mm -hmm. like and i just was looking back on it, i'm like wow that's the last political campaign so we got right. stories from when Biden was in the office into this, you know, upcoming new election. And it's like, I think it's dope because it's like, it's like those back alleys, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. of the world that is people doing like incredible things. Like the media is the mat, the main media is putting all this propaganda and everything out. But like, we're focusing on like positivity, humanity. Right. And so like, um, that's why I wanted to, you know, reach out to you because I think what you're doing with Bond and we could talk more about it, I think it's really uh, phenomenal um, for, you know, the city, for the youth, um, you know, and for the world. And I think that, you know, we have a international outreach. So like, um, like the story that we share, um, you know, on Bond, that's gonna go worldwide. So. Um, mm -hmm. people in France, Australia, Great Britain, England, you know, Russia, all over Ethiopia, um, they they get to see a different side of America and what Americans is really doing, you know, despite the narrative that they put out, um, especially for, you know, women too, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, with that being said, what what uh what was the spark like the initial spark for bond like what was the vision where did that come from and then yeah but before you before you go into that can you um just kind of talk a little bit about for the people who don't know like just talk about your background and then you know lead into that you know with bond mm -hmm. yeah so um you know i'm born and raised in winston-salem um I was raised by my paternal grandparents. And so I like to say I had the luxury of having the best of both worlds. Now I was born in 84. So, you know, at, during that time, you know, you got the crack epidemic, you got drugs, you got just a different um, time doing, doing that, that season or whatever. And so I um, was fortunate that my, my grandparents took custody of me, adopted me, uh, whatever the case may be. And they um, exposed me to what I would consider black excellence. Um, so my my grandmother was uh, in Delta Sigma Theta. She was in um, National Women of Achievement, National Council of Negro Women. She was the daughter of ISIS, the Eastern Star. So I grew up um, being exposed to just a level of organization and structure from the black community. My grandfather was a 33rd degree Mason, um, so very involved in the community. Um, so there was just a certain like foundation and legacy that I had no choice because that's what I was exposed to. And so um, being exposed to that, you know, really wasn't given an opportunity to make excuses or not be active, whether it was from like an educational component, from a from an artistry component. I mean, I think I'm the only one that I know in my family or who I grew up with that took piano lessons, you know, so just being able to be exposed to so many things and the 
specialty about who we are as a culture, I think that started with the foundation of my of my grandparents. And so that kind of led into um, me being, um, I guess, focused on really paying it forward. My grandmother was the vice chancellor of student affairs at WSSU. Um, so I spent a lot, a lot of time on campus with her going to classes. I think she is credited for maybe being the first um, maybe Spanish teacher or whatever she did at Wisconsin State. You know, there's a level of respect that is there that I was exposed to. She took me to classes with her when she did summer school. I mean, I was right there with her. I did the Math and Science Academy with Virginia Newell. You know, so I was just exposed to that level of excellence. And so it kind of, um, when I got to high school, I kind of, you know, realized I was pretty talented in basketball, but it was more about me being able to compete than necessarily um, falling in love with the game of basketball. Um, it took me to get to college where I got a full scholarship to go to Wake Forest. I chose to go to Wake Forest because it was local. And at that time, my grandparents were older. Um, and so I wanted to stay close to home. And so um, I had scholarship offers to go to NC State, UNC Charlotte, Clemson, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest were my, my, my final five choices. And so my sophomore year of high school, I committed very early um, to Wake Forest. And so it's one of the um, one of the most, I think, amazing blessings that I was given because going to school on a full scholarship to play a sport was not something that was, you know, a part of my focal point when I was growing up going to college was definitely a focal point. I was going to do that regardless. Um, but the opportunity to navigate and create, um, create an educational platform where I knew that I would have a level of success was very important to my grandparents. And so went to Wake Forest, got a full scholarship there, played I went through a lot of injuries. I tore my ACL. I tore my Achilles. I broke my finger. I mean, I went through everything that you can imagine. Um, but it taught me so much about just being resilient um, and just not losing focus um, because there was a lot of things mentally that I could have kind of lost focus on. But, you know, I had a great support system being local and you know I wanted to make sure that I completed what I started um just to make my my grandparents and my family proud so kind of you know taking that leading into um how I started bond so when I was young you know I was uh didn't live with my mom but I have a relationship with my mom I saw my mom every Wednesday every other weekend and every other holiday um and so I have you know uh, two other siblings with my mom we have different fathers but we always you know I always saw them I always um, had the opportunity to build a relationship with them and so I wanted to give back to um, a lot of kids who may come from a single parent home or you know maybe they just needed some additional love and support and I wanted to be able to be a resource for that um, because I didn't necessarily have that resource outside of my immediate family on just how to navigate pursuing goals around sports. Um, and so it was a, a big deal. And I just wanted to use the things that I experienced and I had to navigate for myself. I wanted to be able to be a resource and a tool for other families that wanted to pursue and navigate um, those opportunities for their for their children. And so I uh, finished college. Um, I opted not to get my master's. Wake Forest had offered me to come back to play uh, another year and a half of basketball, and they would have paid for my master's. But I was so mentally just checked out of all of the injuries and different things that I was going through. My grandfather had passed away my junior year of college. So I was just kind of, you know, ready to start working um, and, and do what I needed to do to take care of my grandmother because she was aging. So in the driveway of my grandparents house in my grandfather's Cadillac who at this time he was deceased um I came up with the concept of bond so bond is an acronym that stands for building on new development and um how I came up with bond or you know where that came from I'm just gonna say it was nothing but God 
um, that, you know, gave me that acronym, gave me that that meaning, because the biggest thing that I can remember about the relationships that I created through basketball or, you know, with the different people that I was exposed to because of my grandparents, we had a connection, but it was based on a bond. And so, like, that is almost the biggest way of making that level of connection of like long-term relationships, partnerships, friendships is based on the bond that's created. And so, so that's how bond was started. Um, I wanted to use basketball as a platform to kind of engage young kids. It was the same thing that I kind of wish I would have had the opportunity to do when I was growing up. My grandparents did a great job of keeping me active but it was more so of that old school keeping you active because they only exposed me to the things that, that they may not have had access to. Right. And so um, when it came to sports, it just wasn't an important thing in my, in my household. Um, but I knew by the time I graduated college, everybody was, you know, everybody, if you're black, you want to go to the W to the, to the NBA, or you want to go to the NFL or so much pressure on our young athletes to just focus on athletics. And so I wanted to create my own program. I wanted to focus on girls only. And I wanted to, you know, introduce them to um, to learn what smart, smart goals meant, to understand how to kind of dream big, and then to help them mentally prepare for um, what their parents couldn't help them with. And that's just really what I experienced at Wake Forest of going from uh, at like the environment of a Carver High School, right? And an environment of being around WSSU and being around everyone that looks like me to go into a, a place like Wake Forest when all of the people who look like me were only like ath like athletes, right? Um, and so just being able to navigate, you know, nobody told me what to look for when I was trying to decide what college to go to, like to even know the contracts of coaches and when those run out. And what happens when a coach gets fired and a new staff has to come in or to look at um, uh, what things that, that I want to study? You know, I didn't think about what I wanted to major in when I graduated high school. It was just you you just kind of fly by day with certain things. And, you know, I wanted to create a program that would help navigate every single thing that I felt like was overlooked or maybe not focused on in great detail through my process. Wow, that that's that's profound. You you said a lot there, and like I can relate on multiple levels. Um, I was a senior in college when I lost my grandfather, and mm -hmm. that really had a um, impact on my career. Like I was gonna go corporate and be the Wolf of Wall Street. In my eyes, that's kind of how I see myself. You know my senior mm -hmm. year but when my grandfather died it was like my I'm like my people need me and my community need me and I'm like it it really slowed me down off of this hiatus and I wrote about it in my book the alarm clock you know just kind of you know those emotions that I went through and mm -hmm. just how with God like you know in those darkest moments got to speak to you and give you a, a vision and it may not have been something that you ever you know like when you were at carver you probably had no idea so uh bond is an aau um, team yeah so so how bond uh was created you know it was just created as a nonprofit with a focus of, on basketball so i started out just kind of training kids Right. And then I started to realize that the the girls were competitive. It was an all girls team that was playing at Reynolds Park Recreation Center. That was like back when like Reynolds Park is it's still competitive now, but it's is like a ton of kids. Right. Back then it was it was an all girls team that entered the league that played against all boys. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I would train them before their games and stuff. I didn't coach them at the league. They would just come to me for practices and training and stuff because I was fresh out of weight. So um, I started doing camps and clinics and stuff like that. So that's how it started. And then the the girls ended up being 
competitive. And so once they got to a certain level, I started to take them to travel basketball tournaments. So that's how we started, quote unquote, AAU. The girls started when they were like in the fourth or fifth grade. And then um, they stayed with me all the way through high school until they graduated. And every single uh, player in my program ended up with a full scholarship. So it was a lot. It was a lot of work. And, you know, I, I, I talk about it often to this day because people reach out and ask me, like, if if I'm going to coach again and why did I stop coaching? Um, <clears throat> but I was so dedicated to those kids and to that to those families during that time of my life. I You know, I gave away really my 20s and early 30s. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, it was I mean, it just takes a lot to do things the right way, you know, yeah. and so. Absolutely. Um, it, it it is hard to continue to rinse and repeat without the right people that have the same vision, um, like mission, vision and 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 goals. And so, um, you know, it's unfortunate to see how youth sports um, is just completely going downhill. I hate to kind of see it like that, but it, it takes so much time to try to build up the the student athlete as well as the the a parent and the family. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a lot of nurturing. It's a lot of growth. It's a lot of patience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So we, we originally wasn't a AAU team, but because they were training, they were competitive. That was just like, all of the parents was like, well, we should go play in tournaments. So that's kind of how things started. And we ended up being very competitive, winning like state championships. We won regionals. We went to nationals. Um, we played on like Nike circuits, um, even though we weren't like a like a shoe shoe sponsored team because I didn't want anyone to tell me how to do what I was trying to do. Yeah. So we. But so I, we I just remained... think I think that's really mm-hmm. incredible, though. You know, to to have that vision to where like, you know, y'all just was just going with the flow of energy. You know, when you started out, but then that actually one of my favorite words is consolidation. Like, and that to consolidate to an actual team that's competing and um, being featured in these different tournaments and winning state champions, like, that is, that's really incredible. And then I, I was watching an interview that you did, I think it was with Wake Forest, where mm-hmm. you talked about when you went to Carver and you um, turned in the program, or, you know, around at Carver as well. And mm-hmm. I just think that the bond and law in Latin is a it's a term called alter ego. And mm-hmm. alter ego is essentially like something that embodies you that's like an organization. So you talked about organization, you talked about trust, you talked about partnership. So this bond like is a trust, you know, every trust has a bond. And so this bond is deifying what you did um for you know the city growing up actually coming from here and then i i heard you talk about how you argued to go to carver you know like most kids are trying to get away from mm-hmm. carver but <laughs> you know you you came and you know you set the tone and that's your community that's our community I, you know that's one of the oldest schools in the city so it's like you know that's historic and then you know, with with Bond, I, I just think that's an, an incredible lineup. And I think it speaks to your success. And my next question would be, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but what, what would be your message to the inner city youth, like um, specifically young girls like yourself um, who come from similar backgrounds, who may not have no hope. They're not seeing hope in their community. They, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like, they feel like, you know, this is the the end all be all. They, they friends getting killed. They, you know, it's like a war zone going on in the city. Like it's things like all this stuff is distracting them and confusing them. And like, they have this hidden talent, you know, but Mm -hmm. it's like the way of the, the world is like pushing them away from that. It's like the matrix type. So what would mm-hmm. be like your, 
your message for them, um, if you will. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the uh, most important part is just having, you know, hope. You know what I'm saying? Like having hope to make choices. And those choices can end up taking you places that you can never, ever imagine that it would take you to. Um, I can think about times of just like mentally being confused on like my grandmother taking me to open house and all my friends walking around with their, with their mom, you know what I'm saying? And my mom never took me to open house because it fell on a weekday that I was with my grandma, you know what I'm saying? And so there was times where I would be like mentally confused about, um, why wasn't my mom fighting enough for me or you know what I'm saying why am I in this situation when I have siblings with my mom but I'm the one that's not there and I think um I think I've just always had this sense of just hope that as long as I just continue to do what I was supposed to do like just be a good person of value regardless of what's going on around you that you will have the opportunity to make choices and every time you have an opportunity to make a choice, you got to trust exactly what you feel inside of you, not what's going around. But what's inside of you is God. It's intuition. It's um, it's a desire. Right. And so um, those are the things that I think that's most important. Secondly, to that point, you know, I kind of touched on my my grandmother keep keeping me active Um you know, there's plenty of opportunities. I think it's just a matter of having a level of exposure for uh, kids, you know, so just being able to take advantage of opportunities that's offered in, in schools, you know, like it ain't kind of lame or um, it's not uncool to be able to go to your guidance counselor and say, hey, you know, this is something I have a passion for. Is there anything that you can help to make sure that I get the resources. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a perfect answer, unfortunately. And I I really hate so much that kids have to go through so many different issues. But I think the most important thing is just like having that level of hope and and never, ever losing it. And then always trusting what's in what's inside of you Um, and and, and just really kind of understanding who who you are as a person. Um, but obviously that takes time. That takes time of being around the right people and just having a level of exposure to see different and kind of know different. So hopefully that kind of answered it. When I when I talk to kids who you normally get in trouble in school, that's normally what what I kind of talk to them about is just kind of having like just just having hope that is not, you know, um, easily turned turned off. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. for sure. And I think that, is you know, exposure that I really love that word because I remember I met my my senior year. This ironically, this was a week before my grandfather passed away. I was at Columbia University, and they had this um, forum there where Robert F. Smith was there, and uh-huh. I actually got to meet him. And he's my frat brother. He's an alpha, so I got to you know grip him and greet him properly and everything. And like. One of the things I told him, I was like, I've never met a black billionaire. I didn't even know they exist. I'm from the north side of Winston. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. all, all, all we know is athletes. You know, we just know sports and mm-hmm. that's it, like and and rap and that's it. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. so I'm like a, a black billionaire. But when I seen that, and I seen how, um personable he was it 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 showed, it showed me like dang I can do this too mm-hmm. you know what I mean? like and like his story and just how you know he applied himself and like you said you know having that choice to compete like that's mm-hmm. I think that's what sharpens your skills that's what um tests your um that inner person you know what I mean um mm-hmm. So yeah, exposure is really that's if these these kids can understand that, like it'll make all the difference. Like they just need to see different things, and you're doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like with your platform. So like I want to close my last question for you is just can you kind of talk about 
this back to school drive and mm-hmm. where it came from and um what the purpose is and how long you've been doing it and mm-hmm. you know the impact and everything like that. Yeah, so this is a uh, year two. Um I started last year and really it was kind of the same way I said in my Popeye's Cadillac and it's things just came to me. Um I think in the last maybe 15, 20 years. I mean, you know, since I've been out of college, I've always helped families from a individual basis, you know, just to make sure they have like the basics to start school, maybe a haircut, a pair of shoes or whatever. Um, And so maybe like five or six families reached out to me last year. And I was just like, maybe I should just do a large event because if these five or six are really reaching out to me because they need help, then I'm sure that there's more. And um, last year we called it Project 100. And so I wanted to change the a name and so that it would represent more of what bond means, which is love. So um, that's why the name has changed to, you know, Bond Love Day. So it's a day that we want to be able to share love to people who may not, you know, get it all the time. Um, whether that's just to give out some hugs we're going to have a, a tent available for, you know, different ministers and pastors for those families that want prayer to start their school year. Um, we're, we're doing 100, 100 vouchers for the local barber college. Um, so we have um, vouchers for kids who sign up to get their haircut. Unfortunately, they, they aren't open on Sunday, so they can't get their haircut before the Monday that school starts. The good thing is the vouchers for the barbershops will last for the entire school year. So um, we're doing the barbershop and then we have 90 girls that signed up to get their hair done. We're giving out a pair of shoes, um, a top and some pants. So essentially you're getting new um, brand new book bags with school supplies and a, and an outfit and your hair done or your haircut to start your school year. So the whole thought and concept is, you know, you uh, start fresh, you start strong, um, and you will finish strong. And so we want kids to have the opportunity to have a level of confidence, you know, um, so that they can feel like they can do it. You know, whatever it is that they are trying to accomplish, they don't have to worry about somebody picking on their pair of shoes. Um, and so we uh, want the the families and the kids to kind of know that whether they deal with bond or they deal with me on a one-to-one basis that we want to be a resource for them in the community. And I think, um, this opportunity is going to only grow. Um, I'm always thinking about scaling for the future. Like what's my two-year plan? What's my five-year plan? And so, um, in the first year I had no idea what it was going to look like. We did project one, 100. We ended up having so much stuff donated. Um, but we still ran out of book bags, supplies and shoes and clothes within like the first 30, 45 minutes. And so like the alarm was wrapped around the building. I mean, it was just a huge event. And so this year I took it to 100 to um, Project Love Day us to serve 300. And we had, um, I think, more than 146 families um, had already signed up within like the first week or two. And so I had to close everything off way earlier than I, um, than I expected, but we do have 300 kids that are registered. We do have a hundred boys that are get vouchers for haircuts and we have 90 girls that are signed up to get their hair done, um, on, on Sunday. So that's phenomenal. That, (laughs) that is really phenomenal for real, for real, because that's, that's a cultural thing, you know, just our, you know, just growing up and being, you know, a product of the Winston-Salem Forsyth County school system, like, around this time is that time that we get in, you know, we go into Foot Locker and mm-hmm. we go into the different stores trying to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? And then like, mm-hmm. as you get older, like your pockets, your parents may not be able to get it. So like, that's really dope, honestly. Yeah. Say, yeah. Say and it's, hello. It's, this is my son right here, Nas. I was going to ask the age groups. Hey, Nas. Hold on. I'm, I'm uh, let me turn my camera on. I'm in my car. Hey, Nas. <laughs> you saying hey yeah so yeah but yeah that's that's dope that's uh that's really um you know phenomenal and so this is the first annual is this gonna be the first annual on uh, 
you know, uh, yeah. back to school drive? Uh, so, um, mm-hmm. so uh, last year was our first year, but this year um, is going to be our, our second year technically of doing the event, but the first year of it being Bond Love Day. So we kind of changed the name and just added more services and, um, you know, little tweaks to it. We've partnered this year with um, Big Brother, Big uh, Sister. So um, they have been a, a great partner with us. We'll have um, vendors from Novant Health's Mobile Cruiser will be there doing health screenings. We have Atrium will be present. We have some local nonprofits. The Alphas, um, oh, God, I can't remember the chapter. I guess it's, I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong chapter. Alpha Palanda, if it's the local chapter. Yep, 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 yep. Alpha I think the, the guy that I have been working with is Daniel. Does that name sound familiar? Mm, I don't know. I, I'm i telling on myself. I haven't been to an APL meeting <laughs> in a minute. But, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with I don't, I don't know. I'll probably have to see his face. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so they'll, yeah. They'll, um, they'll be present there with us as well. So there's about 14 vendors. We're going to give out um, hot dogs and chips and drinks. We'll give out some free food. Uh, we'll have a DJ there. So, I mean, we're going to give out the supplies. But, again, it'll be a, a few hours and a day of just, you know, us just giving love to people who may need it a little bit more than others. Yeah, for sure. That's like, and, again, like, too, um, I mean, you, you really are answering that question, you know, for the – for the youth with action and you know because like marvin gay say so eligantly everybody needs me love you know what i'm saying and i think that that's needed um now in our communities more than ever i feel like mm -hmm. that's been missing in the communities especially since um COVID and you know how the world has changed since then um mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I did want to get see if I could squeeze one last question and I was gonna mm -hmm. ask you the future of women basketball. Mm -hmm. If like um the evolution of where it is now, um you see more people are drawn to it, it the arenas are, are filling up now, like you know, so can you kind of speak to that um and like how Bond plays a role in that? Yeah, so I mean, it's it's amazing for me to see. You know, I think coming from Carver, um, where we were, you know, state champions, this and that. In most cases, the girls' game was more crowded than the boys' game, right? And then I got to college, and most of our home games at Wake Forest was at the Lawrence Joe in a, you know, not so crowded arena, right? And so, seeing where women's basketball is now. And and not just women's basketball, just women's sports in, in uh, general. You know, there's a level of just respect because most people, I don't think most people could follow women's basketball because it wasn't a lot of, like, athleticism, right? But if you really understand a sport and you know what kind of skill sets it takes to be able to really play basketball at a high level, most people would respect the girls' game more than the guys' game, you know? Just having um, a a scheme on, on offense and defense and actually having to run plays and not just dribble, 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 shoot every other play. Or, you know, like there's a whole concept into um, scoring a ball, into, into stopping people. And so I think um, – how women's basketball and women's sports is right now is just kind of um, showing exactly how far we have grown. I think there's an element that has to be paid attention to with like social uh, media, <laughs> but I think overall, I think it's in a good place. I think now is a good opportunity to kind of leverage from a financial standpoint so that women can get some equal pay, equal contracts, equal opportunity. Because the same discipline and work ethic that it takes for a man to play at a high level, it takes that plus more for women. I mean, not to go too deep, but I've never seen a, a man, you know, give give birth or, you know, having to deal with um, playing through all the different things that a, a woman's body has to go through every single month. And so there's a lot of challenges that I think people don't pay attention to that now women are able to get 
some uh, credit for. And then how how Bond kind of helps that. So, you know, just just really, really making sure that there's a platform um, where young kids can just continue to develop. Because if you skip those important stages of being developed, that's what building on new development means. You got to understand how to use your right hand the same way with your left hand. You got to understand the importance of just being a good, intangible person, right? Um, knowing how to take instruction, knowing how to be disciplined, because it doesn't matter where you end up. Those same things that we have to learn to play a sport are some of the same concepts that you have to learn just to be a good, hardworking, functioning a, adult, you know? And so um, I'm, I'm excited to kind of see it. I definitely wish I would have been playing basketball during this age group just how impactful it is with social media, the financial opportunities. I mean, people are able to take care of their families while in college. I was in college at, at a time where I had teammates at Wake Forest that could not go back home because they couldn't afford to travel to go back home, you know? And so um, I think it speaks to the growth. I do wish that there was levels of education as around like financials, NIL deals, because uh, it's tons of money, um, but there's not a lot of education that's taking place. And so I think one of the hardest things for a person that's been an athlete all their all their lives is they're, they've had a level of coddling. They've had a level of just like being overly supported until one day that stops. And so you got to understand how to navigate what that looks like. And so my hope in the near future is that there will be more opportunities, not just to have an agent to help you make the money, but to understand like what to do with the money and then how to continue to pay it forward so you don't lose who you are as a person. Yeah, that's that's dope. Yeah, yeah um, you know, equity is is everything and education on equity is, you know, is supreme learning about you know, contracts, how to negotiate contracts, you know what I'm saying? Knowing what your worth is, knowing how to talk up on, you know, on deals and things like that. That's that's important. And um, mm -hmm. I say knowledge is sports, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, that's kind of what I've been trying to, you know, demonstrate for the, you know, the young males. I'm like, you know, knowledge is sports, you know, making knowledge mm -hmm. cool reading books cool, giving book report. Like I got a ton of nieces and nephews, you know, so like I'm asking a lot of questions on their behalf, you know, too. So like, you know, with them, like I'm I'm showing them books, I'm giving them books to read. Like my um my nephew Jalen, he's he graduated from East Forsyth and mm -hmm. he moved to four years ago, he moved to Chattanooga with me. We had moved out there and I had given him that opportunity to get that exposure and he's been out there ever since he's you know he started his own business he has his own clothing line um mm -hmm. he's selling jewelry he's traveling he's going places you know he's connecting with people he they just did a um festival in montana you know and i'm like you know if he didn't get that exposure um you know it ain't no telling where he would have been you know so like uh, I salute you for, you know, what you're doing. Um, keep doing it. Our community needs it. The trade phone needs it. And the world needs to hear it, you know. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. salute to that. Nah, certainly. Thank thank you so much. I mean, I definitely appreciate it. And, you know, um, for everything, all the knowledge and information that, that, that you share as well. Um, because I, I certainly learn different things when I'm, I'm just kind of going through your uh, page and different things that you definitely share on your uh, story. I think there's so much information that we just, it, I mean, it's horrible that we don't learn any of this stuff in our school system. Um, and so it's just a lot of work that needs to be done to kind of help us understand who we are, whose we are and where we actually came from. So we can, you know, kind of build up this level of pride back inside of us the same way that I saw with my, with my grandmother and my grandfather, with all of these different social groups and 
um, social justice and, and all those things that was so important back then at that time is because it was needed. Um, and so I think now we get caught up into being a part of things just to, you know, have friendships and titles and have letters on our jackets and stuff. So. Yeah, my my daughter's crying out, but yeah, that that I I really that's why I do like with my platform. That's why I share that because it's like I know that like you know with the propaganda at the mm-hmm. school, like with the schools and you know them not you know keeping like we don't we're not learning constitution and civics. You know that's missing in mm-hmm. our communities now and like mm-hmm. um. I, I took it like I've I've been through a lot of stuff like and I'm like man it's a lot that I, I don't know and so like in, in Proverbs in Proverbs it says that like don't withhold something from your neighbor when you when you got it and so like when I'm learning these things I'm like man I gotta share this I gotta share this with our people because it's enlightened you know and that's why I like you know I use my platform with no more suits to Mm-hmm. you know share and highlight uh you know because this is education too like it's you know because it's going to be another superstar who's like you know preparing to get go back to school right now you know what i'm saying who's going to read this and this and inspire them you know what i'm saying to mm-hmm. do something you know to build something that's like unforeseen um you know just by being yourself and being and staying true to who you are as a person. I think that, that like how you said, like when, you know, you go to tournaments and things like that, you, you set in your own law, you, you have your own standards. This is how we doing it. This is what sets us mm-hmm. apart and, and having that the ability to do that. I just think it's supreme, you know what I mean? And like, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm honored to interview you and, to capture this moment in history, you know, for real, that's what mm-hmm. we do. So, facts. No, no, no. I'm, I'm definitely excited. So just make sure, um, make sure when, once you get the article finished and all that kind of stuff, I, you know, I love to share it and just kind of keep pushing from that standpoint. I, I would love to be able to continue to figure out how to just, just have more opportunities for just education and exposure. You know, I, I just think it's, it is a it is a lost kind of art for, for us. I mean, I even think about me, you know, um, and, and, and not being overly emotional with certain things. Like, I mean, I'm going to be honest, going through this stuff from presidency and all that kind of stuff. And just seeing people that I would consider friend and where they stand from like, a just, a like, just from a, like who are you type of standpoint you know what I'm saying like from their integrity you know there's nothing's gonna ever be perfect but I just think is it's just so concerning to see where we are the things that we overlook and then how we will never miss a beat to find ways to um, judge one another or try to hold each other accountable but we don't hold the person across the the owl to that same level of kind of standard so it's just it's very unique uh times right now so um you know i try not to get too overly emotional for all that kind of stuff and just you know try to keep it level yeah i um i i i'd be like i have to pick and choose when to talk because some like some people my my views on politics is different. Like I don't buy into the narrative. Like mm-hmm. I, again, like with, and that's why like these articles are so serving proof that like no matter who's in office, like here's what we can do as a people. And I feel like that's the most powerful thing. Like when you organize and um, you come together and you can assemble together, no matter who is like because it's um, you know the united states has been corrupt since its inception but oh, yeah. it's like gov- governments and republics throughout world history has been corrupt but our people has still advanced like it's a book mm-hmm. uh, wonderful ethiopians by a sister uh Jusilia nanji houston 
And kind of like you, she was representing, you know, at the time, you know, black female authors and journalists at a time where, and she was doing, um, you know, Egypt studies. And then during that time period, that was just like white males that was doing that. So she was having to, you know, go through that and deal with that. But she still was putting a message out and she still was able to get, you know, her books. Her books is still in rotation and she's one of my favorite authors. And one of the things she said, she said, no matter what the adversity, our people, you know, she refers to us as the Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. We overcome every obstacle that's put forth our way and under any condition. So like with, I don't buy into the, the politics like yeah uh you're we have to we have to work with the representatives and they have to work with the people but if we have to organize ourselves if we don't have our mm -hmm. communities in order and we don't have like like hey, how you spoke to your your grandmother your matriarch and how she was involved on these boards i spoke with congress member alma adams and she told me, she said, the school boards got more power than us. You know what I'm saying? Us us in Congress. She said, the mm. school, these private school boards, they got more power than the people in Congress. So, like, with education, like, we develop our own boards of education. We appoint our own trustees. We, uh, we have our own votes on what we're going to be educating our the youth on and how we're going to organize it like and we have to look at different like uh countries it's a in it's a city i follow this team i share it to you on instagram but they're in france saint quentin france and i don't know if you heard of them but they mm -hmm. have like a program from the you know girls and boys from like five all the way up to the collegiate level and mm -hmm. The way that they're governed is the city is the actual, the university is the city and the city is the university and it's all like under a church. And so mm -hmm. like, I, I think that that's like to, you know, to the educational point, you know, that's opportunity. It's like, you have to go, you have to go to school. You have to play sports. That's just a part of their ordinances in the city. So it's like, mm -hmm. we have, uh, and my, you know, my name, people from the city call me Quentin. I got a mm -hmm. lot of names, but like, that's, <laughs> that's my, that's my, my birth name is Quentin, Quentin. That's what I went by, you know, growing up. My first name is Darrell, named after my mother, but mm -hmm. everybody from the city call me Quentin. But so like, you know, I, I be following them and like, they got people from, like they get um, foreign uh students to come in like from Africa and they compete in tournaments and stuff like that. And I'm looking at it because I'm like, wow, like this whole, it's like a whole, like from elementary school to college, everybody's repping St. Quentin and they, they rock in St. Quentin. And it's like, you know, they, the way that they value education over there is different because their whole sure. city, it's like Wake Forest being the actual, you know the the government you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. the city hall mm -hmm. you know what i mean so like um yeah that's how i like with with the politics i don't buy into those narratives because like i learned this early from when i lost my mom like when i, I lost my mom when i was 14 and mm -hmm. everybody was telling me oh i'm here for you uh mm -hmm. you need anything we got you it's been 15 years and I ain't seen them people since. You see what I'm saying? So I'm right. like, I don't, I'm, I, I don't buy, I don't buy into those narratives. You know, I think we ought to put pressure on those the candidates on both sides. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like, and, and, cha and charge them like, and have strong, um, tough conversation. We have to learn how to have tough conversations, you know, amongst our people. <laughs> And have balance, you know, emotional balance in that, you know. I, I, mm -hmm. So, gotcha. Yeah, 
Well, I, um, I'm not going to hold you long, much longer. I just, uh, I think this is a, a great interview. Um, and I'm going, I'm going to get in the lab. I got, uh, I got a story we releasing this week. Uh, I believe yours, because the, the, the love day is on Saturday, right? Yeah, so the love day is Saturday, but then the girls will get their hair done on Sunday. Okay, well, I'm a. We're coming out Saturday. I just want to talk to the people um, who show up, and you know, the common people and stuff like that. Um, so we'll have that article. Out. If not next Thursday, the Thursday after that. Um, but yeah, I um, and then I'm a. If you can fill out that survey I sent you, um, over the text. Um, so I can kind of have a better under, understanding of how I'm going to put everything together. And, okay, okay. I, and, I see it now. Let me do that. And then from there, because we like we can print out a laminated version of it. We do tabloids, um, all of that. So just fill that out, and then, you know, we can go from there. Okay. All right, yeah. I will do that. Let me uh, jump on this four o'clock, but I, I definitely appreciate you thinking about me and um, just being able to cover it and be a part of a part of my journey. So I definitely yeah. appreciate it. No doubt, no doubt. Well, you have a great evening and um, stay up, stay bonded. Okay. <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. All right, bye bye.